Hey guys, this is Blue Forest. So today we're going to talk about base defense. We'll do a mod overview, talk about some bot and mod combinations, as well as some raid strategy. I did do a video on raiding strategy last year, so you can check that out if you'd like. Uh, but today we're mainly going to focus on, you know, base defense and everything that goes into that. And so first off, I'm sure you've heard this before, but I do want to reiterate that the vast majority of your base defenses are not going to be successful, and that's fine. It's not a problem, okay? Because there, there are a limited number of things you can do in order to make your base more challenging and more difficult, right? There's no magic sort of formula to make your base really hard. There's always going to be good and experienced players who will have no problem getting through your base. And quite frankly, you don't even have to be a very good player to get through most bases because you're only fighting five bots per raid. The mods are very predictable because we already know what they are. So as long as you're bringing the right kind of team and your bots are strong enough, you're generally not gonna have a hard time getting through a base. And so occasionally you'll have a successful base defense and that will feel good. But for the most part, they're not gonna be successful and that's totally fine. Okay, so you want to primarily think of your base as a gold generating mechanism. Four star bots will generate between one and 2000 in gold every six hours. Five star bots, when we get them, will generate more. And so you want to put as many four stars on your base for now as you can to generate more gold. And of course, you want to use all the gold generating relics that you have, like the star saber, the cloaking field, if you have that. And then once we get the hound relics back, all of those together will significantly increase the amount of gold you get both from base and from other game modes, okay? And so the point is, is not to worry too much about your base, right? It's, it's just not possible to make your base super hard for most people, okay? With that said, um, there are some things you can do to make your base a little more challenging. And there are two reasons why Raids could end up being a little bit more difficult than they were in the old game, especially once we have, you know, ranked up five stars and everything. The first is that mods, particularly three star mods, we'll talk about four stars, um, are just very easy to get now. They're faster in terms of being able to dupe them in order to, in order to be able to rank them up. Super easy to dupe. And since you can dupe them really easily and get them to high sig, that can have a little bit of an impact because some of the more offensive mods at high sig can do a lot of damage. The other more important reason why raids couldn't end up being a little bit more difficult than before is because we now have significantly more access to bot sigs, right? In the old game, five star sigs were almost impossible to come by and even four star sigs were very slow going. It would take very long to get a four star bot and certainly a five-star bot up to high SIG. That is not the case anymore. I think this is one of the best changes that has happened between the old and new versions of the game. We're now getting tons and tons of SIGs, right? And that's true for both four and five-star bots, right? I already have more than 99 five-star SIGs. They're already starting to expire. I'm sure that's true for many people. And so that means that you can now get a lot of your bots up to high SIG much more quickly than you used to. And so as a result of that, <clears throat> if you put the right kinds of bots on your base that have very strong offensive SIGs at high level, that will serve to make your base a little bit more challenging. Again, most good players are going to be able to get through it no problem, but it is a little bit of a difference, and I think that's a good thing. Raids were always very boring and repetitive in the old game because they were just always so easy. So anything that can happen to make them a little more challenging, I think, is a good thing. And so we should start off by talking about mods. And we're going to focus on three-star mods because of the fact that, for the time being anyway, four-star mods, you cannot easily rank up beyond rank two. It is incredibly difficult to go beyond that, and that is simply because we don't have tier four sparks in the store. They only go up to T3. And you need several T4 sparks to fully rank up a four star mod. And the thing is, is there is one way to go about getting four star, you know, T4 sparks, but it is ridiculously time consuming, right? You can only do that by selling T3 sparks. So I have an offense spark here. 
I could sell it for 60 essence. The problem though, is that it requires 10,000 essence to form a T4 spark, which means you would have to sell over 160 of these T3 sparks to form a T4 spark, and that's only one, okay? That means that you would have to do a preposterous, insane amount of rating just to generate a single T4 spark. I mean, just an insane amount of rating. I don't have that time, that kind of time on my hands. I'm pretty sure most people don't. It's just totally inefficient. It's impractical. You know, if you really love rating, go ahead and try. But it's just ridiculous, right? It's better, in my view, for sure, to simply wait until they add T4 sparks to the store if they do, right? In the old game, it also was not possible at all, actually, to fully rank up four star mods. Hopefully, we'll be able to this time. But for the time being, I would suggest that most people focus on three star mods because they're very easy to dupe, right? You can buy them for about 11,000 raid chips and you can get their six high pretty quickly and the resources you need are much more available and easy to get. And the thing is, is that three star mods are gonna be nearly as effective as four star mods, especially at high rank. They have the same abilities, they have the same sigs. So I would highly recommend that you focus on three star mods first, okay? Now I'm not gonna go through all of them in detail, but I do just wanna highlight some things. First of all, it is generally best to focus on mods that are more offensive in nature, or at least that have some sort of offensive ability, okay? The three that I don't really recommend people really bother with much are the Paralyzer, the Repair Module, and the Security Module. Especially Security and Repair. Paralyzer's okay, but Security and Repair are very defensive and they provide very minimal benefit for your bots. I would focus on others that are much more focused on damage. And so I'll just go through a few of these quickly. Strange Refractor is good in the sense that even though it's defensive, it has a strong offensive ability. This is basically a stun mod, but the SIG is really good because if you get the SIG high, then every time the opponent makes contact with your bot's block, they will take damage. And at high SIG, it's pretty significant actually. And you have to remember that the AI blocks a lot. And so there's a good chance that the opponent will hit into your bot's block, at least occasionally. So this is a very good one to invest in. And of course you can land some good stuns, uh, which will help your bots out. Robot resource is excellent, right? One of the best ones. It's the passive power gain mod. And the SIG is also very good because you get increased special damage when your bots land specials. And at high SIG, the special damage increase is pretty significant. Harm, also very good. This is the, you know, bleed focused mod, right? So you're dealing a ton of passive bleed damage over the course of 60 seconds. And the SIG is also very good because any DOT that your bots inflict, like bleed and shock and so forth, will deal significantly more damage, especially at higher SIG. It's a really good one to invest in. Nightbirds is also excellent. This is the evade and crits mod, right? So you get uh, the chance to evade all attacks. You get guaranteed crits when your bots do evade. You get increased crit damage, armor penetration. And the SIG is really good too, especially at high level, because if your bot lands a hit when the opponent is at low health just one hit will strike a lethal blow at sig 100 it's about 25 percent so if the opponent is at low health and fighting your bot if your bot hits them even one time they will instantly die so it's really good to put nightbird's mark at the back of your base so either the last fight or that last row uh, because in that case the opponents will be more likely to have already taken some damage it's a really good one to use Exo's pretty good, right? It's a more defensive mod, but of course this is the unstoppable mod and unstoppable is always annoying to fight against, right? You're going unstoppable periodically throughout the fight. With the SIG, you're repairing whenever a debuff is purified, which is fine. It's not a lot of healing, but you are also able to purify debuffs with Exo. So it's a pretty good one, you know, useful to use. Laser Guidance is excellent, right? This is range damage and range speed. Significantly increases both of those things. And the SIG is also very good, uh, especially at higher level because it renders any um, enemy armor or evasion much less effective. So it's a really good one to use, especially with ranged based bots. EMI is also solid. It's annoying to fight against, right? This is the interference mod, just like Blaster's ability, right? So it decreases range speed on the opponents and your bots have a chance to evade both 
range shots and heavy ranged attacks. And the SIG can also be helpful, especially at higher level, because any range shots that land on your bots will do significantly less damage, so it is worthwhile to use. And then, like I said, repair module, you're just repairing a little bit every fight. It's just not meaningful. It doesn't really help. Paralyzer's okay. It's a stun mod, and with the SIG, you can drain power from the opponent. It's not bad. It's just not my favorite. And then security module, it's basically just an armor mod. You get armor buffs, uh, increased armor duration. You know, you, the SIG can prevent armor from being nullified. It's okay. You can use it on tanky bots. It's just not the most worthwhile. So as I said, I would focus much more on the offensive mods before you even think about, you know, pouring resources into um, defensive mods, okay? And so let's talk a little bit about bot and mod combinations. Now, I'm not gonna go through every possible good combination because there's tons of them, but I just wanna give you a few things to think about. So first of all, you want to place bots that pair particularly well with certain mods, right? So put bots on mods where they're gonna derive a lot of benefit. Okay, so for example, one thing you're going to see a lot of is what I have on my base right now, which is Ironhide on Harm. He's perfect for it because he's a tanky bot. He's harder to kill. With Harm, you want the fights to be longer because then the opponent will take more bleed damage. And even if they're using a purifier, the fight will still be longer and harder to finish. And if it is a high SIG Ironhide like mine is, the fight will be even a little bit longer than that because people will have to be very careful about hitting into his melee reflect. In general, Harm Accelerator is great for tanky bots. Fantastic for Ironhide. Really good for our Ultra Magnus because he's so tanky, he's hard to kill. OGM, OGP, Primal when he comes out will be great for it because he's got all that crit armor. You know, any bot that makes the fight longer is really good for Harm, as well as bots that have a lot of DOT because, of course, with the Harm SIG, it increases the uh, strength of things like bleed and shock. When it comes to robot resource, you really have two ways to think about it. So obviously in the old game, you used to see Tronus on RR all the time. It was one of the most annoying fights in raids because he has his own passive power gain plus the passive power gain of RR. So he would often get to a special three very quickly, you know, especially if he didn't have a power controller. It was a very annoying fight. We will get him later, but for now, any bots that do have any kind of bursts of power or passive power gain will do very well on RR. I would say that right now, Sideswipe is probably the best choice because with his SIG, especially if it's fairly high, he's going to generate a ton of power at the start of the fight. And of course, he generates bursts of powers when he dodges certain shots. And of course, he's evading all the time anyway. <clears throat> so Sideswipe can get to a special two or three very quickly regardless. So if you put him on RR, he will sometimes be able to get up to a special three and do a lot of damage to the opponent. Besides him, you know, RC is a very good choice for RR. Prowl can be. Soundwave can be. You know, any bots that are generating a lot of power passively or in bursts. In addition to that, you could also put bots on RR that have monster specials, particularly special two or three. So I have Sound Blaster on RR a lot of the time because the special two and three do huge damage. And so if he's able to get up to a special three, he will do a lot of damage to the opponent. So any bots with big special threes in particular, you know, Sound Blaster, OGM, you know, Shockwave, you know, Motor Master, you know, any bots with really big special twos and threes, really good for RR because if they do get up to a special three, they'll be able to do a ton of damage. Nightbirds, excellent, of course, for evade bots because it is an evade and crit mod. So scouts and warriors generally crit the most and the scouts, of course, evade quite a bit. So B was always the most common example to use for Nightbirds because he evades all the time. So with Nightbirds, he's gonna be evading even more, makes the fight very annoying. Sideswipe is a great choice. Kickback is a great choice. Cheetor will be when we get him back pretty soon. You know, any evade bot will do very well on Nightbirds. I often use Dirge on Nightbirds just because he does crit a lot, but also the opponent has to remove fear in order uh, with melees, obviously. Um, and so if he has a decent chance to evade, you know, if he evades sometimes, then the opponent will not always be able to remove fear. And, you know, that just increases the likelihood that bleeds will be landed on them. So in general, scouts and warriors and any evade bots will do well on nightbirds. 
Laser Guidance, <clears throat> I have RC on her now. She's a great choice for it, right? Because she has range buffs, a very strong range game. Any range-based fighter will do very well here. Blaster is a great choice for Laser Guidance. Starscream for sure. Shockwave can do very well. Mirage, if he ends up using a special one, especially if he's at high sig, makes him super annoying against Laser Guidance. And of course, the new addition, Wasp, is a great choice for it because he's getting those ranged and special buffs when he's at lower health, makes him super annoying against Laser Guidance as well. When it comes to Exo, um, I often have Motormaster on Exo, like a lot of people do, because, you know, he goes unstoppable a lot. And, you know, having the extra unstoppable from Exo is very helpful. Um, I know a lot of people have had a lot of success with Sonny because he has his own unstoppable. Tantrum's a good choice. You know, any unstoppable bots will do well on Exo. You certainly don't have to use unstoppable bots. Uh, by the way, OGM is another good choice because he often goes unstoppable when you knock him down. Uh, you don't have to put unstoppable bots on Exo. It just makes it a little bit more annoying and a little bit more of a challenge for the people that are facing that mod. And then Strange Refractor, um, I often have Soundwave on that because he stuns, right? You get increased stun duration. So any stun bots can do well on Strange Refractor. Uh, by the way, Jetfire is an amazing choice for it because he stuns a lot with his parry game. But again, you don't really have to have a stun bot on Strange Refractor. It can be anybody. Um, but like I said, if you get that SIG high, then every time the opponent hits into your block, uh, your bots block, you'll be able to do a fair amount of damage and you'll probably land some stuns as well. And so, like I said, with the other ones, you know, security module, if you're going to use it, put a tanky bot on it, like a primal or an ultra magnus. Repair module, you know, scorp would be good. Ratchet would be good. You know, healing bots. Um, and by the way, I'm actually looking at them right now. I did forget to mention that wheeljack, of course, is great for harm, especially if you are using nano repair, right? Nano is very frequently used on bases. You see a lot of wheel jacks on harm for good reason, because if the opponent does not have a DOT bot to break through wheel jack shield, then they have to wait for his shields to go down. And by that time, they've already taken quite a lot of bleed damage. Um, and then Paralyzer, like I said, it's decent. It stuns and you can drain power. Other power draining bots like Prowl or Kickback are good for it, uh, but you can really use anybody on that mod. And so, like I said, there's, you know, there's definitely other good bot and mod combinations. So I would just encourage you to experiment and just test things out and see how it goes. Because you might find that, you know, even though most of your base defenses will not be successful, you might find that a certain bot and mod combination uh, tends to cause trouble for the people who raid you. Maybe they take a lot of damage. Maybe they lose a bot or two. So just do some experimentation and see which combinations are most beneficial to you. And so, like I said, the main thing to keep in mind is that you wanna pair bots with mods that are specifically tailored to your bot's abilities, right? Because then you'll be able to magnify the kind of damage that your bots are already doing on the mods that they're on. If you do that, then you have the best chance of making your base a little bit more difficult and just, you know, have a better chance of having a successful base defense every now and then, okay? And so, I think it's time to talk about raid strategy a little bit because it does parallel with base defense. I'm not going to go through all of it in detail. I have done another video on it, but I just want to mention a couple of things about your own raiding strategy when you are raiding, okay? First of all, if you don't want to be raided that much, then don't raid that much yourself. Raiding is about acquiring resources. That's it. So in other words, don't hoard raid chips. There is no reason to do that. It is utterly pointless. Like, just don't do it. You raid, you get up to the amount of chips that you need, and then you buy what you want, and then you forget about it. If you do that and you don't raid all the time, then you won't be raided that much yourself. The other thing you can do is keep your raid chips low. Right now I have about a thousand raid chips. I do that on purpose because even when I am shown as an option for other people to raid, I will be a less attractive target because they're not gonna be able to get a whole lot of chips from me. Somebody else is bound to have more chips, right? So not raiding very often, only raiding when you need to, and keeping your raid chips low will help you to not be raided too much. 
And in terms of rating, you have to remember a couple things. Well, first of all, the rate store is totally different than it used to be, right? It used to be a rotating sort of cast of characters in here. It was on a schedule, a one month schedule, and things were constantly changing in the raid store. You could buy sparks, you could get Energon, you could get uh, revives and repair kits for AMs, you could get some other things, some of which were useful, some of which weren't, but it was always changing. Now, it's exactly the same all the time, at least for now. So the only things that you can buy in the raid store at the moment are relics and sparks, that's it. And the only other use that you have, by the way, for raid ships is to buy mods, right? So to get mods in the first place and then to dupe them. Those are the only reasons you have to raid are to get one of those three things, mods, sparks, or relics. Now, when it comes to relics, obviously that does require some grinding, but you know, I did a raid grinding video. It's not very hard, it doesn't take that long. And so you just do your grinds. You can use raid shields while you're doing it, right? They're only 10 energon each for the four hour ones. Once you get up to 100,000 or 250,000 chips, buy your relic and then you're done. Same thing if you need sparks or mods, okay? So those are important things to think about. The other thing I wanted to mention is I do not encourage you to uh, do raid revenge, okay? So this guy just raided me. I am not going to revenge him. The main reason why is because, well, first of all, I think it's kind of a dumb concept. I mean, who cares, right? Like, if raiding is part of the game, then you're going to raid and other people are going to raid you. Like, it's not personal. It doesn't matter at all. But the other reason is because it's impractical. Because if I wanted to go ahead and raid this guy, I can't see how many chips he has. I just have to confirm that I want to raid him. And so if I were to go ahead and raid him and he only has, you know, 2,000 raid chips, well, then it's not going to be a very efficient use of my time because you always want to maximize the amount of chips that you get. That's why you're raiding. So don't bother with raid revenge. It's a dumb concept. Just do raids normally and maximize the number of raid chips that you can actually get, okay? And so I would stay away from that for sure. I would stay away from raid revenges. Like I said, only raid when you actually need to raid. And then in terms of when you're raiding, um, it is a good idea, of course, to have an appropriate team. Now, the good thing is there's really only a couple kind of bots that you really need. And even those you don't act, you don't absolutely need. They're just helpful. So number one, have a power controller on your raid team, right? You need somebody to handle RR more easily. So clearly, you know, a bot like Prowl, bot like Kickback, uh, Wheeljack can help, Soundwave can help. You know, any bots with power control are going to do very well for RR. If you don't have a power controller, you can still get through it. There's just more of a risk that the opponent's gonna get up to a special three and you're gonna take a ton of damage. Um, but having a power controller for RR is probably most important. Um, second, having a purifier is excellent for harm, right? Because otherwise you're gonna take a ton of bleed damage. Now, obviously purification options are limited at the moment. You know, Grim is kind of the only all-purpose purifier we have. Rodimus is, is pretty good, but very few people use him. You know, bots like Ironhide and Tantrum, you know, their purification is very inconsistent and unreliable. Uh, but until we get TC back, uh, Grim's going to be your best bet for harm. But the good news is that will change soon because we're going to get Primal back. And once we do, then Beast Wars teams will become much more popular for Rage in general, right? Because they can purify, they get the attack buffs, and Beast Wars teams are excellent for Raids. So bottom line is have a power controller and a purifier if you have one. Otherwise, it doesn't really matter. I mean, if you have an armor breaker, sure, that's helpful against tanky bots. If you have a bot to deal with, you know, something like laser guidance, you know, if you have a bot like Blaster, okay, bring him. Doesn't really matter that much though. If you get the power controller and the purifier on your team, you're pretty much good to go the vast majority of the time. And then in terms of teams, like I said, um, certainly Beast Wars, great team. The most popular option by far right now is going to be the Maximus teams, right? You know, with bots like OGP and Prowl, Mirage, Sunny, etc. And that makes sense, right? You're getting those huge boosts in your attack and health, and you're getting to a special two really fast. Makes the fights very quick, you know? So Maximus teams are great for raids. Just makes everything easier. And then, of course, the Shocky Tech team is also an outstanding option, right? With Shocky and two Blasters, or Shocky, Blaster, and another one of the techs because Shockey becomes super OP on that team. You know, he does ridiculous damage and you've got power control. So a Shockey tech team is an excellent option for raids. Um, 
But in general, like I said, it's not complicated. Just make sure you have bots that can handle robot resource and harm accelerator. The rest of it really isn't that complicated, okay? So I would just um, you know put together a raid team and just use the same team over and over again. That's what I do, that's what most people do, and it just makes things go much more smoothly for you when you do raids, okay? And so uh, beyond that, I mean, that covers most of what we need to go through when it comes to uh, base defense, mods, ranking up mods, duping mods, and of course, raiding yourself, right? So in summary, the main things you just wanna focus on are, you know, put the right kinds of bots with the right kinds of mods. Don't worry about base defense. It'll happen occasionally, but not often. Get some of your bots to high SIG and put them on your base, especially the ones with very offensive SIGs. Um, experiment with bot and mod combinations. And in terms of raiding yourself, you know, only raid when you actually need stuff, then buy it immediately, and then don't raid again until you need more. Don't raid just totally casually all day because it's just not going to benefit you, okay? Um, and one other thing, though, I did want to say about raiding. If you are a newer player or if you just don't have a strong roster yet, in which case some of these raids might be difficult if you're going up against, you know, completely maxed out bots, is you can check the SIG of the bots and mods that you're fighting against, right? When you go and start a raid, you can check to see, you know, what's the bot SIG? What is the SIG of the mod? And that can be helpful just in terms of how carefully you play, right? Because if you come up against a SIG 100 Ironhide, then you've got to be super careful with that melee reflect. If you come up against a SIG 5 Ironhide, well then, if you hit into him with the melee reflect, you know, it's not going to reflect that much, right? So you can at least check those those things out, and I would recommend you do so if you're running a weak team for now, especially for the three bots in the middle, because then it at least will tell you that you need to be more careful if you're going up against a very high SIG bot or a very high SIG, you know, offensive mod, okay? So I will leave it there for now, guys. I hope this has been helpful. Do let me know if you have any questions, and we will be in touch again soon. Take care.